capture all this brilliant, brilliant knowledge that I'm giving you. So essentially, if we're doing a cylinder, both those circles are going to be the same size. So all we need to do is find the area and then multiply by the distance between the two circles. Okay. And so we've been writing this as volume equals base times height or volume equals base times length. Essentially, it's the same thing. Find the area of the shape and then multiply it by the dis distance between the two shapes. Uh, if you had a rectangular prism, find that area and multiply by the height or length between the two rectangles. And now we're going to do triangular prisms, which means find the triangle area. There'll be another triangle that's exactly like it. And just multiply by the distance between, between the two triangles. That's it. basically all we're doing. Okay. So essentially, area is supposed to be an eighth grade skill. Do you remember even anything from eighth grade? I don't know. No. 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 You're like my son when he went, when he went, uh, to middle school, he didn't do very well in middle school. And I said, what are you, what are you doing? And he goes, well, middle school doesn't count. I go, what do you mean it doesn't count? He goes, well, if you fail sixth grade, they're going to put you in seventh. If you fail seventh grade, they can put you in eighth. If you fail eighth grade, they put you in ninth grade, and then it starts to count. And I said, so you're just resting for three years and expect to go in a full sprint for four years. Said, buddy, that's not going to work. So I was really on him for eighth grade, and he said it, you know, it helped him. But a lot of students, you guys know, I mean, it's 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 it just doesn't stick. It just doesn't stick. Uh, we know this because on standardized tests, we have some of the lowest scores, not in elementary school, not in high school, but in middle school. So, so somehow, some way, that's a problem. All right. So we need again, it's the area of the triangle times the distance between the two triangles. Now on my website, on my website, on my canvas, I do have the lecture, how to find areas of circles and rectangles and triangles. Um, so the area, the area of a triangle is one half the base times the height. And remember, the base and height form a right angle. Okay, so right here, I know this is the base, and I know this is the height. So I, I know that right off the bat. And so they gave me the base and the height. That was nice of them. It was very nice. So the air, so the volume will equal the area, which is one half the base times the height times the height or length. I don't care which one you use. Height or length, doesn't really matter. The separation between the triangles. Well, all right, so the volume is one half. Well, the, the base of this triangle is four centimeters. And the height of this triangle is five centimeters. Sorry, millimeters. And the separation between the two triangles is 21. So it's a plug and go type question. There's nothing that we really need to discover. We just put things in and we're ready to go with it. And half of four is two, and two times five is 10, and 10 times 21 is 
210, and then we can put it in units. Okay. Okay. Millimeters cubed. <clears throat> so my students always ask, well, how hard can you make it? Well, why don't you make it where you've got to calculate either the base or the height? Like on number two, I mean, number two is going to be the more difficult one. Not too bad. I mean, it's still the volume will equal half the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle times the weight, the distance between the two triangles, which, by the way, we know is 15. Okay. And we just don't know if this is the base, and I would use this as the base. This is an isosceles triangle. It's, it's, both sides are eight and eight. Um, and so I said, well, how high? If this is sitting on the base, you know, let's, you know, how high up does it go? But we have to go back to remembering what we know about isosceles triangles in order to calculate this. Again, we have a lot of stuff. We have half. The base is 10. We don't know the height yet. And we know the length is 15. So I've got to do a little work to find this. I have to recall isosceles triangles. And that's the hardest part. Is, oh man, I can't remember anything about isosceles triangles. Okay, well, isosceles triangles, I'm going to draw right here. There's your 10. There's your eight and your eight. Isosceles triangles, when you cut them in half, form two congruent right triangles. And of course, that cut that base into five and five. And what I have here is I have just one right triangle I can use the Pythagorean's theorem, which says a leg squared plus a leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And now this green triangle eights the hypotenuse and the five's a leg. And I'm just gonna call this X right now. I'm gonna call this height X. I can call it H, but I'm gonna call it X. You can call it anything you want. Just don't call it leg for supper. Now, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. All right, so leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So one leg is five, the other leg is unknown at X, and that's gonna be equal eight squared, okay? So five X eight, eight being the hypotenuse right across from the right triangle. Okay, so this is 25 X squared, 64, and then subtract the 25 from the 64, and we get, uh, is that 39? My brain working well today? I think my brain worked pretty good today. I was a little worried when I got up. I didn't feel too good. I had some sinus thing. I had bad sinuses. I thought, oh, man, this is going to be a rough day. All right, and then we take the square root of both sides, and x will equal the square root of 39. So now we know the height is the square root of 39. Doesn't look too, too good in there. The square root. Of 39. Cool. Oh. All right. Well, multiplication is commutative. I can change the way I, I can pick anyone. I can pick one first. I'm going to go 10 times 15 is 150. Half of 150 is 75. So the volume equals 75 square roots of 39. Like how I did that? I went up. 10 times 5. It's easy to multiply by 10, just add a zero. And multiplication commutative. I just have to multiply all four of these in any order. 10 times 15 is 150. Half of 150 is 75. I still have to multiply by the square root of 39. Or get it calculated. All right. That's what I'm going to do next. And by the way, this is cubic centimeters. And then if I want an approximation, I can throw 75 times the square root of 39 into a number blender. Let me get my number blender. I should have had that open to begin with. I use a spreadsheet. I'm going to use my computer as a number blender. You can use your phone. You can use uh, a regular calculator. You can use an 
abacus. You can, no, you can't use an abacus. Slide rule, no, you guys don't know what a slide rule is, right? All right, so people are looking at me like, what? He's lost his mind, all right. So um, that was 75 times the square root of 39. So the square root of 39 is the same as 39 raised to the half power. Uh, so 468, 468, all right? So 75 times the square root of 39, 468, 37, 468, 37. So 468, 37. I think that's what they're saying. Where's the Cubic centimeters. All right, that's cool. That's what we got. No? Very exciting, right? <laughs> Very exciting. Okay. So, I'll make, because this is beyond the scope this year, I'll make number three extra credit. If you want to do number three for extra credit, do it, send it, send me a picture this weekend, and I'll give you some extra credit. I'm going to leave that. But we will do the tenth. The tenth is a reasonable problem. All right. This one is, you know, you're taking one shape and converting it to another shape, and we're not doing that this year as part of the standards. Uh, because of COVID, we've lightened things down. But it's fun. It's fun. Um, I used to have a manufacturing company and uh, in LA, and this was something we we were doing injection molding. This is a uh, this is known as extrusion or extruding mode or extru extrusion manufacturer extrusion manufacturing, where you just kind of go through this mold and you push stuff through. That's an extrusion. And we were doing uh, mold manufacturing. So if you're producing something, you had to do a problem like, like this, where you go, well, how much raw material do I need? If I want to produce 100 of something, I better buy the exact amount of material. Otherwise, I will have a whole, otherwise, I might be short and they're still going to charge me for the full run, or I'm going to have too much and now I'm storing raw materials. And you don't want to do that. It's a cost problem. Okay. Someone yesterday said, you've done a lot of things, Mr. Megalo, and I always have to remind students, um, yes, I'm 60 years old this year. So I've done a lot of things because hopefully you will too. Hopefully you will too. Hopefully you'll have some adventures. So let's look at the tent. All right. This is essentially a triangular prism, just like we did. Okay. And tent manufacturers always tell you what how much room is inside the tent. Makes sense. Um, that way you can kind of figure out well which one has the most room and how much headroom, how much how high is it? That's important too. All right. Um, you want to know. So um, this is symmetrical and congruent. So uh, basically, what we have here is again. We have, if it's symmetrical, we have an isosceles triangle. 35, 35, and 42. Okay. Because it says you may assume the front and back of the tent are symmetrical and congruent. So they're symmet this is symmetrical. And you're not going to have one side of the tent being 12 inches and the other side being 52. They do make tents like that. Or they used to. They used to make asymmetrical tents. Uh, I don't know why, but they did. All right, so I got an isosceles triangle. Again, it's, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to have a single right triangle, and I'm going to call this my height is going to be x. So I'm going to say that with x, and this is going to break this triangle into two 21, 35, and I'm back to my friend Pythagoras. Who didn't even know a squared plus b squared equals c squared? He just said if you make a square out of one of the legs and the square of another of the legs of a right triangle, it'll equal the area of the area of the long side. 
Atlantis, which in Greek means the longest string of the heart. That's why it's the longest side. History doesn't really mean anything. Here we go. Now, we're going to jump the history teachers. 21 squared plus x squared. I like joke, but nothing. I like this. I love history. Here we go. Okay. And now I need a little number blender, or maybe not. 21 times 21 is one more 21 than 20 times 21. And 20 can be broken into 10 and 10. 10 times 21 is 210, plus the other 210, we're up to 420, plus that one extra 21, 420, 461. Let's see if I still got it. When you get older, the first thing to go, you know, that's your mind. All right, 21 squared. 441. Ah, I was off by one. I was, I got too many 20s. 441. Ah, I guess I'm getting all these. 441. All right, that's it. 21 times 21. All right, come on. All right, I gotta, I gotta go with it now. All right, plus x squared. Equals 35 times 35. I'm not even going to do any mental tricks here. But it's about a thousand. Plus 35 times 35. I should just bring one of my calculators. 1225. And then subtract the four. 41 from both sides. Mental note, bring calculator to school. I probably have some on the shelves, but the shelves are all messed up. We got all those desks against them. 784. 784. And therefore, therefore I ran out, I ran out of room on the bottom. Therefore, x equals the square root of 784. That was a lot of work, but it all worked. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work, but I can't get this thing doing what I want over here. Ooh, that was really not what I wanted. <laughs> Smart board. I don't know about the operator though. Okay. So let's get this going here. All right. So the volume of the tent is again one half the base times the height of the triangle times the length in between the two triangles. So the volume, the volume is equal to one half. The base of 42, that's the base, 42, times the height, which we found was the square root of 784, times the distance between the two triangles front to back, 84. Okay. So there's what I'm going to put into my number blender to get an approximation. When I get numbers this big, I just go right to the blender. All right, right to the blender. All right. Here we go. It equals 0.5 times 42 times um, 784 raised to the one half power times 84. I have that correct. Got too many things on the screen. Too many things I want to drag and drop. Okay, here we go. So that is one half 42, 784 square root, 84, 49,392. 49,392. 49,000. 
49,392 cubic inches. Okay, and now we can compare that to some other tents if we were shopping for tents, because they would do the work for us, but someone had to calculate it at the tent manufacturing company. Someone's job. Yeah, they get paid. They get paid to do that. The designer, construction, you know, they get they get paid for that. What's the area of the floor? Just as a side note, they usually tell you your floor area, and that's 84 times 42. All right, 84 times 42, length times width of the floor of that tent. 4,284, 42 times uh, 84, 3,528. Oh, 3,528. And since that's two dimensions, heavy square inches. There you go. And they, they, they might, they may convert this to feet. If you want cubic feet, you would just divide this by 12 and divide by 12 again, because 12 by 12, square. And if you wanted cubic feet, you would just divide this by 12, divide by 12, divide by 12, you know, divide by 12 three times, right? Divide by 12, cubic, because a cubic foot is 12 by 12 by 12. So you can easy, and if you want to convert that to some sort of metric, you have to follow that formula as well. So you have to convert that if you're selling this tent outside the United States. You would want to also have all your metric specs, because all the other countries use metric, except for us. When I was a kid, I'm like, get ready for metric, get ready for metric. And, oh no, we're gonna get ready for metric. How are we gonna do that? How far is it? How far is a kilometer? I would, I would always ask, well, how far is a mile? Well, 5,280 feet. Well, what's a foot? So when I get people, I used to teach um, students from other countries, and our system really messes them up because you go, okay, there's 12 inches in a foot. How many feet in a yard? They go, 12? No, no, three. And they're like, what? Because metric is just all base 10. Centimeter, centa, 100. 100, breaking up a meter into 100 parts. Milla, 1,000. Right? So really, metric is easier. But we never did the conversion. We never did the conversion. All right. So what we're going to do now is you're going to try a little quiz. And that quiz is in the... Go to modules. How are we doing at home? Haven't heard from anyone at home in a while. You guys still with me? All right, thank you, Christian. Nice to see you virtually. Noah, you too. All right, Oscar, fantastic. So, um, oh, and Isaac too. So go to unit nine, Nicholas, fantastic. Go to unit nine on volume and click on topic 31. Maya's there too, fantastic. And at the bottom of that page, topic 31, you'll see there is a geometry top 31 practice quiz. All right, and go ahead and if you haven't, go ahead and download it. My students in here, do you have, did you bring it with you? You have it, okay. I will print a couple of them since there's only two of you, I can do that. And you'll get the quiz, not intro quiz, the practice quiz. And it's not too bad. It's just four problems. Um, one, two, three. Um, four is kind of advanced, but please try it. I'm gonna print a couple of these. 
and I'm going to stop this recording.